Hello YouTube, this is Crow Salma. And here we have today is a high grade kit from Bandai, which is the Mazinger Z Infinity version. Now this is the version that appears in the movie, in which I can't find a reliable source to go watch it. Now I'm not about pirating, so uh, I'm not going to go and download it, nor am I going to go on like some kind of illegal stream site and watch it. Um, I, I'm still looking to see if maybe it's going to be on either Crunchyroll, any of like some authentic like you know sus uh, subscription based uh, streaming sites like you know Hulu or Netflix. Uh, but I really want to go ahead and watch this movie without having to um, you know like do it illegally. Uh, that's just kind of like my principle. So if I can ever go ahead and find this like on Blu-ray, I'll definitely buy it. Like I'll, I'll buy the movie immediately. I don't care. Uh, but I, ultimately, I do want to watch the movie because. I am super interested in not only just the Mazinger Z Infinity version, I am interested in all Mazinger. Uh, I've watched the, I think it's like the MKL uh, version. Um, I didn't really care for that too much. I watched like maybe five episodes of it. Uh, didn't really like it. And then I started watching the, um, it's the Mazinger Z, I think, Impact version. Came out in like 2007. It's okay. I watched the first three episodes. Uh, I think the first episode definitely like threw me off. The second episode is a little bit better because it kind of like actually starts from the beginning, uh, whereas the first episode just kind of like throws you right into it. But I'm definitely interested in watching more Mazinger, so I might just kind of watch the highlights on YouTube, uh, and that's really going to be about it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start looking at the details, aesthetics, and articulation of this kit. Okay, so now looking at the details of the kit, uh, essentially the entire kit is going to be riddled with panel lines. Uh, now what I would say is it's probably in your best interest to use like maybe silver or white for the black. And then I would say for everything else maybe use um, black for that panel lining. Uh, but if you're not going to use black, then I would just say you have to use a lighter color because obviously the black on black is not going to make sense. Uh, but if you do, you know, just water down some silver paint, um, I don't know if you're going to use like lacquer or acrylics. Uh, but definitely, you know, thin it down and use that and just kind of ma like make a little wash and use that for all the black. I think that's going to really come out and it's definitely going to expose all those panel lines because this thing is truly just completely covered with beautiful panel lining. Now, now the kit is going to have some translucent parts which is mainly going to be for the breast plates. Uh, now this is for the breast fire and it's kind of like more uh, iconic when it comes to the Mazinger. Now some of them have you know very solid red pieces but uh, some of the more newer lines I've, I've been seeing have these clear pieces which look so so good. Okay, so we're taking a look at the Pile de Ron. Uh, this is essentially the cockpit for the Mazinger. Now, you are going to have a clear little piece right there for the uh, the front cockpit. Uh, you can definitely paint that a clear color if you want to do it blue or red or whatever color you want. Uh, you can definitely go ahead and do so. Uh, now, you are going to have these wings which have their own little individual articulations. So, whenever you do mount the Pile de Ron inside the, uh, the, head, co uh, the head compartment, uh, it's going to fit really nice and snug because there's going to be a little peg hole right there that's just going to go ahead and plug right inside. Now this one, like this little wing right here, occasionally comes a little loose. So sometimes you're going to have to like press this in uh, just to make sure it stays in the right spot. Uh, but overall, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It's a very, very nice little accessory. And if you want to go ahead and have this kind of like, you know, free floating somewhere, you can go ahead and attach it to a base by, you know, like a little claw attachment uh, if you want. And as far as hand accessories, this is going to come with some fists. Uh, so if you are going to do the rocket punch, you definitely have some fists to go ahead and utilize. Or if you want to go ahead and just do it in some like action punching poses. And you are going to have this kind of like more open hand. Uh, it's not as much of like a karate chop as it is just kind of like something to hold. But there's not really any accessories that can utilize this hand appropriately. So I guess it's just kind of there for, you know, maybe just some effect poses. But then you do get this sweet karate chop hand, but this is definitely going to be used more for those blades that's going to be attaching to the forearm. 
Now, next little bit of accessories that this kid's gonna have is going to be the effect parts for that nice little rocket punch. And you do get two little like kind of blasting effects. Now keep in mind you do get a stand. It is not this type of stand. It's more keen to uh, this type of stand, but I haven't built it because I have so many stands uh, that I just went ahead and kept it the way it is. But you do get a nice little, I think it's a uh, stage four or I guess like stand four uh, stand. So pretty nice, but I'm just gonna go ahead and utilize this one, but you do get two little effect parts. Now, oh, now all you have to do is essentially take off this little forearm piece right here and then you attach this little piece right here onto that little peg attach that forearm over here to the effect parts like so and i personally think it is a pretty awesome little accessory uh, especially if you can get the pose right you could definitely pull off some pretty amazing things with that rocket punch okay so the next thing we're going to look at is going to be the drill missiles so once again we're going to go ahead and take off this little forearm piece then we attach a little drill missile piece right there. Now this is gonna be the one that has the peg right there pointing to the top. Then we plug in that forearm piece right inside there and just go ahead and bend it back like so. And here are both of the elbows bent back and exposing the little missile compartments. Now I think this is a pretty ridiculous looking accessory. However, I think it's actually pretty awesome that you're gonna have a robot that is in a very tight position. All I have to do is bend their elbow back and expose these little missile uh, pods and it's just gonna fire away whenever it's in a tight position. So that is pretty awesome and it makes me really wanna watch this movie even more to see how they're gonna use this. Uh, if it's just kinda like while he's you know in a regular battle and just kinda throws it out or if he's in a tight position, he's like, hey, got these missiles right here for you, buddy, and go ahead and fire away. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna take a look at is going to be the iron cutters. But first, let's go ahead and start moving these forearm pieces out. So you're gonna really just detach these and move them very slightly, uh, pretty much downwards. And it's gonna expose this little peg piece and you're gonna do this for both sides of this forearm. So bring that down just a little bit and bam, now you're gonna have both sides exposed. Then you're going to take the iron cutter part and you're going to just plug it right there and it's going to have a certain kind of sequence so you can kind of see right here it goes up and then uh, over to the right so you're going to make sure that you're going to have the ones that uh, appropriately uh, plugs right in there. And with the iron cutters and that kind of like cross chop hand, uh, you really are going to be able to have some nice little poses with this. So if you want to go ahead and shoot like a rocket, um, the rocket forearm punch is definitely going to be awesome with the iron cutters attached to it. Uh, but if you just want to go ahead and have it do like some little like karate poses and all that, uh, that's definitely going to be accessible with this and it's not really going to look too bad on your shelf. Okay, and here is the Jet Scrander. Uh, I think overall the details in this is essentially matching what the overall aesthetic of the kit is. Uh, it has a lot of great panel lines inside there, and it just looks really good. The colors are pretty awesome. Uh, the only thing that this thing does have is gonna have some stickers uh, right here on the side. So if you can see, there's just a couple of black stickers that um, pretty much are right there for whatever reason. I guess they just didn't like really, you know, want you to go ahead and paint that in. And there's gonna be some black stickers right there. So not really too bad. And uh, the only like functionality this thing's gonna have is that it can really just essentially go up and down. Um, and that's, that's really about it. So um, pretty cool feature, but I kind of wish it either would have been, you know, set like this or if it can uh, come out this way. So just kind of move out a little bit on a diagonal kind of angle. But uh, I think overall looks really good. Connects on the waist, uh, basically staying uh, together with this little like yellow uh, piece that you know keeps these two gray pieces together uh plugs into the back so there is going to be a piece that you pop off and you just go ahead and snap that in right on the back but it does look pretty damn good now you do get two stand pieces the first one is one that just kind of connects right below the cross so you can go ahead and snap it in and it can be posed you know kind of any ways that you really want but essentially like standing up because uh, it can't really lean too much uh, and if it does then it'll kind of like start falling a little bit uh, but overall it's not really too bad 
Okay, and the next little piece that makes it stand is going to be this clear piece. So if you just go ahead and take this off, this piece connects over to a stand and what happens is you just let it rest uh, right on top of it. It doesn't actually peg into anything. So you really have to have this thing flush because if you kind of lean it to you know any other way, which I'll kind of demonstrate for you, it's, it's going to just like start slooping out. So um, you're really gonna have to keep it as uh, horizontal as possible, but it is pretty cool. Like this is actually a pretty dope pose. Uh, very, very iconic to the like original uh, Mazinger. So if this is something you really like, I definitely recommend you, you know, posing it like this. Uh, you really shouldn't have any issues outside of like, you know, if it's more diagonal than horizontal, you have an issue that way. Uh, but definitely looks pretty good. Um, and if you want it to peg, I mean, Definitely you could use some like little sticky tack or something like that and um, it should be able to go ahead and stay stay intact that way. And looking at the articulation, the head goes back that much, forward that much, side to side, and it's going to be on a little ball joint peg. The shoulder joint moves forward about that much, if you can see right there, and then also back that much. The shoulder is going to be on a ball joint peg, so it can only really go out about that much. However, it can rotate all the way around, but you're gonna have this little chest plate right there. It's gonna go ahead and prevent it, uh, unless you kind of move the arm outwards. The shoulder armor can move up and down, swivel at the bicep, rotation at the elbow. Now you also get this nice little bend, which is also gonna move this little plate up right there. So you get a pretty cool looking bend and kind of like a little articulation right there. The hands are ball jointed, and the torso is also gonna be on a ball joint. The waist can swivel back and forth. Side skirts are on a ball joint as well. And the hips also have a little articulation which allows it to essentially move down and then these hip joints are gonna be on ball joints as well. It could definitely do the splits. Rotation below the hip. And the knee articulation is pretty good overall. But I do wish that it kinda went back a little bit like how the gimmick on the elbow is. I wish that this part right here may have moved back or something so that way you can go ahead and get just a little bit more movement um, or pretty much posability with that knee joint. Forwards and backwards on the ankle and it's going to be on a ball joint so it could definitely move all the way around. Now when it comes to actually you know kind of posing this kit it's going to have a little bit of issue because these these feet just don't like stay as flushed. Uh, so if you are going to go ahead and pose it, you're really going to have to like mess with it. Now like this, this isn't really too bad, but if I kind of want to split it out just a little bit more or have like this foot going forward, you're really going to have a hard time kind of like getting it in that right pose, uh, but you're going to have to just mess with it a little bit. Now looking at height comparisons, uh, basically with a high grade Gundam, you're really going to see there's a pretty significant difference in height. Uh, now, when it comes to the Mazen Kaiser, this is the Monoroid kit, and there's still a significant height difference from this one. So, overall, Bandai may have made a high grade kit, but I honestly will say this is like terms of master grade quality in some aspects. Not really with a full inner frame, but with a lot of the details that it has, um, this definitely exceeds that of a normal release high grade kit from Bandai. So overall, what are my thoughts on the kit? Well, I definitely have to say that this kit is fantastic in every sense, way, shape, and form. Um, the amount of details, the uh, articulation, um, I would just say like everything that you know it comes with, the accessories, it's just so, so amazing and, and extremely satisfying to build. Um, if you're looking for a kit that is, you know, more detailed than your average kind of like Gundam, then I would say this is something you really want to pick up. It's, I think it's going to be an amazing display piece. Uh, maybe this is something you really want to bring to like maybe your office. Um, more likely, I'm going to bring this to my office and kind of display it uh, with all the Gundams I have because I think it's, I think it's truly a conversation piece. Uh, even if you get some like stands that are more like dedicated to the kit itself, um, Vice just kind of using it just for you know pictures. But if you really keep it on your display, kind of like you know with the the rocket punches or you know it flying or you know however you want to do it, like maybe it's flying with you know rocket punch in the air, like all that's going to be super awesome to go ahead and have displayed and kind of like just come back to it and look at it. Um, that's just like my overall you know thoughts on it. So. Um, 
I would say the only cons I can really pull off uh, on this kit is maybe just some of the uh, the articulation. I think the ankles uh, suffer a lot, or maybe it's just like the shape of the feet. Uh, but I think overall, I, I, I hope that maybe in the future if they do release more of these, uh, maybe like some of the original uh, Mazinger uh, kits, then they can kind of like do a little bit better when it comes to that articulation, the ankle joint. Um, I would say maybe make some better articulation and in, uh, in certain areas like with the knees, uh, kind of like have it to where it can bend a little bit more, like how they did with the elbow joint. Um, but yeah, that's like really me nitpicking. That's kind of like me just trying to find things that are uh, cons on this kit because in a majority, this thing is fantastic. I uh, can't really say anything else about it. So. Uh, I really hope that y'all can go ahead and pick this up if you're a fan of Mazen Kaiser uh, or Mazinger. I I'm going to try my best to go ahead and watch the mo movie that this kid is based off of if I can go ahead and find a reliable source. Uh, but that's pretty much it for me, guys. Uh, definitely thank you for watching. Um, I know this review kind of maybe felt a little bit rushed, but uh, I really want to go ahead and push this out to y'all. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and this weekend try and find that great Mazinger kit from the Infinity version. Um, but that's, it. that's pretty much it for me, guys. So definitely Definitely thank you, for, thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll be seeing y'all in the next review. Bye bye.